welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by and you got here just in time. That's right, we're camping again. Seems like I just, just got back from Tyler State Park, cause I did. Got back, unloaded the truck, reloaded the truck, picked up Trudy Thunder <laughs> and hit the road again. We have traveled far and wide. We're north of Paris. Visited here a couple years ago and I just had to come back. And actually, we were supposed to be here two months ago, back at the beginning of spring and I had to push it out twice. But we're here, we're at Pat Mays West, Pat Mays Lake. Just happened to be right across. So when I was here last time, I was camped over there. Can't see because of the trees. We'll check that out in a little bit. I'm in site C, C03. It is a 30 amp and water site. We're in a Corps of Engineer campground, so of course we've got uh, asphalt pads, but we're waterside, can't complain about that. One of the challenges of traveling with a, a larger RV is, as you know, getting level and picking sights from pictures and videos doesn't always work out like you expect, as is the case here. <laughs> It is most unlevel. Good thing I'm carrying lots of blocks and chalks. You see, we're what one, two, three, four, five, six layers of blocks up, and we're pretty well maxed out on the hydraulic leveling system. But we're level. As I said, 30. Fortunately, I've got the soft start units installed so i'm running both air conditioners and lord knows we need it the <laughs> yappy's gonna be able to walk underneath this almost that's how high off the, the ground we are have starlink i know there's a lot of y'all that are following my starlink journey this is not a perfect site for starlink because of the trees are blocking it i could put it up on the back of the coach but the trees would still be blocking it i don't have enough cordage cable to get it out there where it needs to be but it's working I mean, I was watching YouTube videos as I was getting it set up. There's a cell tower right on the other side of the lake. So we're boosting that. We have connectivity. Yappy's, Yappy's gonna be working remote tomorrow. So our site is kind of weird. The fire pit's way back over there. Charcoal cooker is here. Concrete picnic table. I mean, we're gonna be camping in style. We've got a lantern hook and whatever those are it looks like they moved so i'm gonna finalize the setup and deploy little red i'm gonna deploy the boat this was the the location where i decided i was real i was gonna get a boat because when i was here last the lake was way up And all of these reeds and bushes were in the water. I was in that site right there and I couldn't fish because, and you still can't fish because the reeds are obscuring the water, but the fish were just jumping like crazy in this little cove. So we're gonna deploy bobber Let's see if we can catch some fish. Play on the scooter. 
I've already done a scooter tour, but I'll, I'll do another one. Because they're fun. Oh, and by the way, I did fix Little Red. And I'll show you that repair when I, when I get it deployed. All right, stay tuned. More to come. It's still spring, so they tell me. But it sure doesn't feel like spring. There's one, one thing about Pat Mays West that I didn't remember and that is how rough the roads are <laughs> it's hard on little red but it's just as pretty as i i remember i got bobber in the water down there right there paddled around looks like the sand bass are still running uh, so maybe in a little bit when it cools down we'll see if we can catch some sand bass meanwhile Karen and Bob it was sure a pleasure meeting y'all thank you for stopping by and saying hello uh, I'm truly grateful and honored it's hard to beat meat that's on sale so for tonight's meal we are having pork loin wrapped in bacon I wonder if it was from the same pig. Hmm. Anyway, having pork loin wrapped in bacon that was on clearance. Dollar a piece. I think that's a pretty good value. You know, one of the things I really like about Pat Mays, and Pat Mays West in particular, it is so peaceful here. There's, there's no road noise. There's no planes flying overhead. It's just, uh, uh, there's boaters. It's a, it's a lake. There's going to be boaters. But all in all, it's just a really, it's a peaceful place to camp. Tomorrow morning, bright and early, I'm going to go do some fishing. And then we're going to run around and see some stuff when it gets too hot to be sitting on bobber. Good morning. Decided to go out here, see if I can catch a fish. Did, did a little scouting yesterday. And I found that there's a place right out here, about 10 feet of water, where they were really showing up on the fish finder About right there. Well, so far, I've only had the one drum. I had a lot of minnows getting consumed, but no fish. I gave up on fishing. It was starting to get really hot and the wind died down. I, I've jumped in white lightning and I've gone a wandering. I'm wandering around Pat Mays Lake. And on my last visit to Pat Mays, it was earlier in the year and it had it was a heavy rain. And Pat Mays was flooded. So there's three, actually three Corps of Engineer campgrounds on Pat Mays Lake. Pat Mays West, Pat Mays East and Sanders Cove. 
I was able to visit and document for you two of those three, Pat Mays West and Sanders Cove, and that's because Pat Mays East was closed. And I don't know if that was due to flooding or construction. Regardless, it's open now. So this video is primarily going to be about the things I didn't see the last time I was here. And one of those is Pat Mays East. Now, now granted, that's not very much stuff, but there's a few things of note here. And one of them is here where I'm standing. This is the designated swim area. Now, Pat Mays West does not have a designated swim area. So Pat Mays East has got you covered with a swim area. And the parking is four wheel drive. <laughs> There's a safe place to, to bring the kids to swim. So let's go jump in white lightning and we'll go see some more stuff. And then I'll deploy a little red and we'll do a, a scooter run through Pat Mays East. So let's go see some stuff. Pat Mays East has some pretty campsites. This one, for example, this would, I think, be considered handicap accessible to, to some degree. Certainly it would be one of the, the most level sites in the whole Pat Mays East and West parks. This is overlooking the boat ramp. Well, let's go see some more stuff. So if if you're camping with your horses and, and your horses like to go to the lake, and Pat Mays East actually has you covered. They are prepared. I'm kind of speechless here because I haven't seen any trailheads. There must be some equestrian trails somewhere though, otherwise they wouldn't have paddocks at your campsites. Now these are, these all appear to be 30 amp with water sites. There's, there's your site. That's, that's kind of rough camping, but hey, you got power and water and, and, a, and a paddock for your horse. So if you're, if you're traveling around with your horse and you might want to come visit Pat Mays East so your, your horses can get out and stretch their legs. I'm not sure what that's all about. It's like some kind of exercise block. All right, let's go see some more stuff. Well, how about that? They actually, there actually is a horse trail. I don't know much about it. It definitely is not going to be one that's Little Red friendly. Little Red doesn't have feet to navigate obstacles, but if you got a horse, this looks like it might be a neat place to ride. Pat Mays East actually has a boat ramp. It is a long boat ramp. The lake is so calm today. There's a flight of stairs over here to go down to the the courtesy loading area. There's a there's also a sign that says no, no swimming because there's a place to swim over there. This is the looking up at those three sites that we were, the sites that we visited. So for your boating convenience, Pat Mays East has two boat ramps. Both East and West campgrounds have two boat ramps. This one opens onto a cove. A little bit hard for you to see. But right there, that bank, that's Pat Mays West and the boat ramp that is opening into the same cove here. So this morning I was actually fishing over there. I did not know that Pat Mays East was open. This visit to Pat Mays Lake is sponsored by campgroundviews.com. Welcome to your secret weapon to finding the perfect campsite. Campground virtual tours are here, they're real, and they're available for you. Have you ever been to Joshua Tree National Park? 
we have now. You're in Jumbo Rocks Campground, the most popular campground within that national park, and you're taking a look around. You're seeing the roads, you're seeing the sites, you're seeing how far away that restroom is from those sites. Details never before available to you as a camper are at your fingertips right now. You can even enter the dates of your stay. I'm gonna be there on September 14th. You enter that date, hit confirm, and your map will update showing you which sites are green and available for your stay. Click on them and jump up to and take a look at that particular campsite. Is this one right for you? If it is, that's a pretty cool spot, isn't it? If it is, click on it, click book, and there you go. You can book that campsite right now. Campground virtual tours are available, as noted, for over 860 locations all across the United States. Go to campgroundviews.com, click on the virtual tours tab, and you'll see all the tours we have available right now. Note there's pages. Simply click on the pages to load more results, and it'll update the map and the listings below with the different campgrounds we have available. If you want to go by state, click the regions tab, and you can easily go to the various states that we currently have tours available of campgrounds all over the place. The campground virtual tours are a game-changing experience and we invite you to join now by going to campgroundviews.com, clicking on join and signing up today. The link is right up there. You ought to check them out. They give you a better site overview than what I do. Links in the card above and in the description below. So let's go see some more stuff. On my last visit to Pat May's Lake Pat Mays, Pat Mays Lake, either, whichever one it is. The last time I was here, it was record setting flood. The spillway was really crazy. <laughs> Not so much today. Still a lot of water coming out of there though. And I bet there's some good fishing in there. It's getting hot. Let's uh, see where this goes. Now this sees a bit of foot traffic. Yeah, a heck of a heck of a hike for me anyway. It's only about a. But I can see why people make that journey. All right, here's why people make that journey. I just saw a monster catfish. All right, I guess we're not gonna get to see another big catfish. All right, I'm, I'm gonna make my way back to the truck and we'll go see if we can find some more stuff. Good morning. Pat Mays Lake. This is the best time of the day right now. Uh, Considered it's gonna be 100 plus degrees again today. Just sitting out here floating on the lake, hoping to get a bite on my hook, but not really caring if I do. I'm not attached to the outcome. Of course, Bob and Karen were telling me that there's not a whole lot of structure under the water here. So there's not a whole lot of bass or crappie. Most of the people that are catching fish have been going up the lake or down the lake. Heading up into where there's trees in the water or down by the dam where it's deep. No. Looking at my little fish finder. Yeah, I agree. I'm not seeing any structure. And that I'm only seeing what appear to be schools of sand bass. Uh, and 
I caught one sand bass yesterday and one drum. It's not looking too promising. But we're gonna explore a creek channel this morning just because. Let me show you what I'm, I'm looking at. You're, I'm backlit, so it's hard for you to tell. That's because the sun is over there. But that's where I'm headed, back up in there. Our visit to Pat Mays has once again come to an end. All too short a visit, but I must travel on. There are other things I must do and produce videos of. To give you a, a recap, a second ha a second recap for Pat Mays. I still I, I still really love this park. Um, I think it's better in the off season uh, when it's a little more peaceful, a little more quiet. Not that it's excessively loud. There's just a lot of a lot of people out here camping, putting and because of the heat, they're putting a there's a huge load on the electrical grid. I have, I've had some issues with my pedestal tripping late in the day when it gets, when it's in the direct sun. I don't know if that's because the coach is at its hot. I don't know, I'm, I don't know. I think it's a bad breaker because I had, it tripped on me yesterday with just one air conditioning unit and a fan. It was late in the afternoon. I wasn't in the coach, so I didn't have both AC units running. I had a, had a fan outside and one unit inside, and it tripped. So I'm, I'm thinking that the breaker has been abused. <laughs> and seeing the people that have set up camp on, on, on my other side of my RV, so the, the neighbors that I had roll in yesterday, uh, they deployed... Uh, a window unit, a big window unit for a tent. They have a, a air conditioner running on the RV and there's uh, more, every plug is utilized on the pedestal and they have this full kitchen array. So, so the people that come out here on a frequent basis, they, they really set up camp and putting that much of a load on a, on one 30 amp circuit, uh, it's gonna over time weaken that breaker. And I think that's the biggest issue that I've had with the power while I was here. So just, you know, just so you know, most of, when you, while we're here, let's, 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 let's have a look at this pedestal. In, in most, a majority of your, your public campgrounds, your, your 30 amp pedestal only has 30 amps available. And people are gonna say, yeah, but, but there's a 20 amp plug in there too. Well, there's, there's a, a 110 receptacle and then there's a 30 amp receptacle. That, that receptacle runs through, that's a pigtail off of that breaker. So there's only 30 amps in this pedestal, not 50, not 45. There's 30, period. So if you're gonna bring your kitchen from home and a, and a 110 air conditioner for the tent, you still only have 30 amps available. And when you put a heavy load on that breaker, it's gonna trip. And every time it trips, it shortens the, it lowers that available amperage. Over time, that 30 amp breaker will trip when you have a 20 amp load on it because it's just been tripped and, and it's, it's served its purpose way too many times. It gets old, it gets tired. That's what I have going on over here. But when the pedestal gets hot, when it's in the direct sun, the breakers start tripping because it's just, it's weak. Too much abuse. All right, I'll stop preaching at you. I cleaned up the garbage that was here when I arrived. I'm taking all of my trash with me. I really love Pat Mays Lake. Seeing it not flooded 
the only the only thing I've, I've realized now is there's a lot of bank access that's kind of a drop off but there's still a lot of bank access there's not a lot of structure in the water so it's hard to find places where the fish are not to say you can't catch fish out here I've, I've seen lots of people catching fish I like Pat Mays East I really I really like the fact that they have uh, equestrian I don't have a horse but I have friends with horses so you guys now you know there's an equestrian campground over here at Pat Mays bring your horses and go for a ride so we are we're done I like Pat Mays. I suggest you come pay a visit to Pat Mays West or Pat Mays East if you have a horse. Come during the week or in the off season. I hope y'all enjoyed my rambling visit. To... I hope you enjoyed it. Please click on the thumbs up if you did. I would be most honored if you'd consider clicking on that subscribe button. Thank you for thinking about that. And for those of you who have been following along, <laughs> thank you. That's why I'm here. That's why I get to do what I do. Thank you for that opportunity. I mean, just, just look at this beautiful, beautiful lake. Ha! And a great campsite. And for my patrons, most appreciated. Thank you so very much. You rock. All right, y'all come back now, you hear?